All right, good afternoon everybody. This is OpenGL tutorial number three, and this will be a quick one. What we're going to do is we're going to follow in the footsteps of OpenGL tutorial number two. So I should actually go and change all my namespaces here, but what I've done is I've just created a new project called OpenGL tutorial three, and it's based on a copy paste of the OpenGL tutorial number two code, which is based on copy paste of the OpenGL tutorial number one code. So in tutorial number one, we went and created a window, just like in the Nehe tutorials. Uh, but we used free glide instead of doing it from scratch. Then tutorial two, we created our first polygons, both a triangle and a square. And now we're going to go and add a bit of color to them. So this is pretty straightforward and is only going to take a few moments. So let's go and dive right into it. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to modify our shader a little bit here so that it has some color information. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to modify my vertex shader to accept a second input. And that's going to be vertex color. And now there's gonna be some sort of output from this vertex shader as well, which is going to be the color we've assigned to each of these vertices. And all I need to do here is I just need to assign color equal to vertex color. So color is going to contain vertex color, but now we can pass this output as an input to the fragment shader. So I'll show you what I mean here. We're gonna have an input, which is VEC3 color. And now every time that this VEC3 color gets assigned in the vertex shader, the fragment shader, when it runs, gets a linear, linearly interpolated version of the color assigned in the vertex shader. So you can imagine the fragment shader has to fill in all the pixels or all the fragments that are between uh, the three vertices that make up a triangle. So if you have different color data assigned to each vertex, then the OpenGL engine will go and linear interpolate between those vertices and give you a mix of the color that was assigned to those ver vertices. So you can imagine if you're on a line that contains blue at one edge and red at the other edge, at any point along that line, it will be filled with a mixture or linearly interpolated version of that color. So it'll start out bright red on one edge and then it will slowly transition to blue by the next edge and it'll look really nice. So we're going to take advantage of the built-in linear, linear interpolation that OpenGL provides, and that will allow us to provide this nice, smooth, color-changing effect to our triangle. All right, and now what we have to do is we have to take this color and pass it into that fragment color there. So instead of being just white, it's going to consist of an R, G, and B component, or red, green, blue component, that comes from our fragment shader, or from our vertex shader, and then has one applied for the opacity. All right, so now we have to go and assign a vertex buffer object to this vertex color. So it's going to be very similar to what we did before. So let's just dive right into it. I'm going to create two new VBOs, private static VBO vector three. And one of these is going to be my triangle colors. And the other one's going to be my square colors. All right, so I'm going to set my triangle color equal to new VBO. And I'll assign three different colors in this case. My first is going to be red, my next is going to be green, and my next is going to be blue. All right, and then I'm gonna go and make my square color, and I'm going to make this the same color for all four vertices. So I'm gonna set it to kind of blue color, 0.5, 0.5, and one, and I'll just repeat that three more times for a total of four colors. And that's it. I need to go and set that to vector three, there we go. All right, so now I have to go and modify my code a little bit in this draw method to go and assign this vertex buffer object to that vertex color. So let's go and do that really quick. It's pretty easy to do using gl.bind buffer to shader attribute. And we'll pass it the triangle color and we'll put it into the vertex color attribute and we're going to do the exact same things for the squares. And I suppose I need to assign a program here. Let's do that here as well. And I'm going to use a square color. All right, I think that's really about all there is to do. So let's run the program and take a look at what happened. So you can see that our square here is rendered in a blue color and it's common across all four of these vertices. So that's, there's no need to do any sort of mixing or blending across the, the fragment positions. However, on this triangle, we assigned a red color to one of the vertices, we assigned a green color to the other vert vertex, and a blue color to the final vertex. And you can see that OpenGL has gone and interpolated between these colors, which is what gives us this kind of neat gradient here. 
So this matches up pretty well with the tutorial on Nehe's website. I think I even used the same colors and everything. So in the next tutorial, we're going to go and manipulate the position of these objects a little bit more than we are already. And that's about it. So we've added another vertex buffer object. We've seen how linear, linear interpolation, man, I have trouble with that word. We've seen how linear interpolation works on the GPU. We've taken note that the vertex color is supplied to the vertex shader and then the vertex shader outputs that same color and then it is linearly interpolated and supplied to the fragment shader as an input and then we use that value as our fragment color. So that's it for this tutorial. I hope it's a good one and I'll be firing up tutorial number four shortly here. All right, as always have a great afternoon and happy coding.